That's very useful terminology here. Now, this only applies to the substituents on the diene. It doesn't apply to the dienophile because we can just use normal cis and trans for that. It only applies to the substituent on this asterisk carbon and on this asterisk carbon. Here's where it's helpful to put in the asterisks. We're looking at the relationship. Let me put those in here between the two asterisks. Well, these two are pointing to the inside of the diene, and these are pointing to the outside. Well, both of these were pointing to the outside. So in a sense, they're similar. We wouldn't want to say cis, but they're similar, so they should still be similar over here. So if we put one on a wedge, we should put the other one on a wedge. All right, so I think one of you might have thought that one would be on the wedge and one on the dash, but because these started similar, they should end up similar. Now we have to ask ourselves whether we need to draw an enantiomer of this. Well, remember our new approach. The easiest way to check that is just to ask whether this molecule is meso. Is this molecule meso? No. Yes. I was saying yes, and then can you just cut the pipe on it now? Yeah, because they're going to be, yeah, it is. Here's the plane of symmetry. The top half is symmetrical to the bottom half. This is symmetrical. So what did we decide? Is this meso? Yes. Yes. So does it have an enantiomer? No. No. So how many products are there? One. One. We said that's, that's really a superior approach to trying to draw the other possible, trying to draw the version on dashes and see whether they're the same. The easiest thing is just to see that this is meso. Uh, you could draw the other one. If you draw the other one, it should be apparent that you could just flip and rotate this one so it looks like this. But that's really just a waste of time. We already knew by, from the fact that this was meso, that it didn't have any antium. So there's only the one product here. So we still have to check for that. All right, so the big new thing we saw here was this idea of outside and inside. When you're comparing substituents on the dienophile, you can use the normal ideas of cis and trans. But when you're comparing substituents on the diene, you have to use the ideas of outside and inside. And, um, but we still kind of have retention of configuration. If two substituents both start outside, they should end up pointing in similar directions in the product. Do we, it doesn't matter if outside is wedged or dashed? Let's see. You mean in the starting material or in the product? In the product. I should have erased that. You know how in the chair, up means something and down means something? And right. like, if you're consistent, it's okay, but here, does it matter? Like, do they want outside to always be wedged or anything like that? Yeah, the answer is it doesn't matter. Because remember, if we drew them both dashed, that would just be a different picture of the same thing. If we drew them both dashed, that would just be a different picture of the same thing. Again, it's like looking at my hand from this direction and looking at my hand from this direction, they're still both my hand. So if, if someone said, show me your hand, I could either do this or I could do this. It would be the same hand either way. So yeah, it doesn't matter in whether we draw these on wedges and dashes. The key thing is that they, since they both started in similar positions in the starting material, which I erased, then they should both be in similar positions in the product. But if you wanted to, you could have drawn the picture where they're both on dashes.
problems if you work that out. Now, you, you guys avoided the mistake that most people make. Is this outside or inside? Inside. Yeah. A lot of students just get really weirded out by inside substituents. That is, a lot of students would draw the arrow like this. They think that this is the carbon that's participating in the Diels alder because it's so close to the dienophile over here. A lot, most students do that, so it's good that neither of you made that mistake. You both saw that it's still this atom that's participating in the Diels alder, not this one, even though it happens to be inside. Uh, for me, the way to avoid that is to put in this asterisk, but uh, that didn't seem to be a trap that you guys were falling for there. So don't get confused by inside substituents. This is still a substituent. This is the atom that's actually doing the Diels alder. But we still can't forget about this substituent. It has to go over here. Now, uh, if we choose to put this on a wedge, should this be on a wedge or a dash? Dash. Because here, this is in the inside position, and this is in the outside position. That is, they started in different positions, so they should end up in different positions. Now, is this molecule meso? No. No. There's no planes of symmetry. No planes of symmetry, so it doesn't have an enantiomer. Yes. So you were both correct that we should then draw the enantiomer. And again, we don't even actually have to take the time to check whether we can rotate this to make it look like this. We already knew they were going to be different because this wasn't meso in the first place. You can confirm that there's no way to flip or rotate this to lay it on top of this. But because this wasn't meso in the first place, we knew that it had an enantiomer that was different from it. So that's a, a better approach than we used last term for getting all the stereo products. So here we really did get two different products. So most people have more trouble with inside than outside substituents, but that didn't give any trouble here. Let's do a synthesis. Let's come up with some starting materials that would give us this. Let's just come up with some Diels Alder starting materials. So this should be a one step synthesis. Let's show how we could synthesize this in one step using a Diels Alder reaction. So we need to come up with two starting materials a diene and a dienophile. Didn't give you any trouble. That's very good. All right. As usual for me, it helps to put in the asterisks and the dots. So here I would put in these asterisks and these dots for these carbons over here. And then we have to put in all of the substituents in the right places. So here's the, this methyl. Uh, here we have a methyl group. Now this methyl group, I, let's see, how did you draw that? You drew that on the inside. Now if we're going to draw this on the inside, oh, it has to be on the outside. That's right, because they ended up trans. Since they ended up trans, they should have started in different positions. So that was the key right there. The substituents on the dienophile are easy because there's no real stereochemistry here. So again, for me, putting in the, dash, the dots and the asterisks helps me to keep track of the carbons in each place. The key thing here is we wanted trans stereochemistry for the diene substituents, so we should have started with them, one on the outside and one on the inside. Now, this actually would have give, this wouldn't just give us this product, it would also give us its enantiomer, where this is on the dash and this is on the wedge, but uh, there's nothing we can do about this. At least one of the products from this reaction would be this, so this was the right answer. And it looks to me like both of you guys got that right. Now, it seems to me like there's another way you could have done this. 
seems to me like you could just as well have done it this way. You could have put this substituent on the outside and this one on the inside. It seems like either of those would be fine. So either of those would be a good synthesis. I said that Diels Alder is probably going to be real important on the next exam, and one of the ways it's probably going to be real important is for synthesis problems. Uh, oftentimes, all, um, most of the synthesis problems at this point are Diels Alder syntheses, or a lot of them, so it's good that you guys are comfortable with that. Well, now we can talk about the endo and exo ideas, which is more stereochemistry. <laughs> 